Versailles dealing with heartbreak after a six-year-old was murdered earlier this week. We'll show you how the community is rallying around each other and that young boy's family. A Lawrenceburg man convicted of the attempted manslaughter of a police officer now knows how long he'll spend in prison. We'll have the details from his sentencing coming up. If you're going to tonight's game, Rupp Arena officials are asking you to arrive 15 to 20 minutes earlier than you normally would. I'll tell you why, coming up. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Barbara Bailey. I'm Bill Bryant. Here's what's happening at noon. A Central Kentucky community right now stepping up in a big way to help the family of a young murder victim. Six-year-old Logan Tipton was stabbed to death in his home on Monday morning. A GoFundMe page set up for Tipton's family has raised nearly $40,000. They're also taking up clothing donations. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has more on this outpouring of support for the family. It's our top story at noon. Friends of the Tipton say the family is overwhelmed by the outpouring of support from a simply heartbroken Versailles community, as well as those from outside of the area who are all stepping in to help after the murder of their six year old son. It has now been two days since who police say is a stranger to the family, Ronald Exantis went into the family's home stabbing and killing the six-year-old. A horrendous crime leaving the whole community asking why. The tragedy hitting many hard and wanting a way to help. A page was set up for the family. It has already exceeded $40,000 to cover expenses of the family as they deal with the loss of their son. Now another need added to that page, clothing for the family including the Tiptons for other young children. Friends of the family say they simply cannot go back to their home right now as it is too difficult considering what happened there. They are asking for some help to provide the family with those necessities to get through the funeral services and the next few weeks. Information on sizes as well as how to get those items to the family can be found on that GoFundMe page. In Woodford County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. And for a link to the GoFundMe page, visit WKYT.com or the WKYT mobile app. A man convicted in the attempted manslaughter of a police officer has learned his fate today. Timothy Nutgrass was sentenced to 20 years for firing shots at police when they were called to his Anderson County home in March of last year. WKYT's Mark Barber is outside the courthouse in Lawrenceburg with the details on that. Mark? The Anderson County man, who was convicted of two counts of attempted manslaughter of a police officer, has been sentenced to 20 years in prison following the jury's recommendation. Timothy Nutgrass was convicted of four counts of wanton endangerment and two counts of attempted manslaughter of a police officer. That adds up to 40 years in prison, but the 49 year old will only serve 20 because his sentences will run concurrent. The 49-year-old shot at police in March last year when they were called to his home on Mays Road to investigate a harassment complaint. According to the Anderson News, officers said Nutgrass fired at them hundreds of times from his front porch. When police took cover and set up a perimeter around his house, the 49-year-old tried to escape. He took off in a car, crashing into the sheriff's cruiser. His lawyer says Nutgrass may not have been in his right mind. The evidence did mention that there was uh, some mixture of alcohol with over-the-counter uh, counter medicine. The judge denied a request to grant Nutgrass probation, but his lawyer says he will try again. He says he is already planning to file another motion, this time for shock probation. In Lawrenceburg, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thank you, Mark. And the court has decided that Nutgrass will get credit for time served. He could be eligible for parole in about two years. Friends and family will begin saying goodbye this evening to a fallen Central Kentucky firefighter. The Montgomery County Fire Department says he worked a fire late Friday night in Estill County, and his wife found him unconscious the following morning. Preliminary autopsy results are showing that Clevenger's death was heart-related. His visitation will be tonight from 5 until 9 at the Living Water Church in Mount Sterling. The funeral is tomorrow morning at 11. 
The Basketball Cats will take on Eastern Kentucky University in an in-state matchup at Rupp Arena tonight. And for the thousands of fans who plan on heading out to the game, there are also some changes in place in the wake of the mass shootings across the world. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain has more on the increased security measures. If you're planning on coming to the game tonight at Rupp Arena or any UK home game this season, UK police are asking you to be patient and to plan ahead with these increased security measures. Fans will see enhanced security precautions starting tonight. Rupp officials say the adjustments are due to, quote, changes in the world. One adjustment for fans that began earlier this year is being asked to remove their coats. And if you're wearing bulky or baggy clothing, you may have to go through additional screening, which will include a handheld metal detector. There's also a new list of more than a dozen banned items, including backpacks, cameras with detachable lenses, video recorders, selfie sticks, no signs that are bigger than two feet by two feet, and one more banned item are purses that are bigger than 16 inches by 16 inches. The doors to the game tonight will open 90 minutes before the game begins, and Rupp Arena officials are telling me they're asking people to arrive 15 to 20 minutes earlier than they normally would. In Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. The gates will open at 5.30 tonight at Rupp Arena. And tonight's game, UK versus EKU, begins at 7 o'clock. The game will be televised on ESPN2. There is a small chance of rain over the next few days, but those temperatures are going to continue to warm up, and we'll see some sunshine here and there as well. This weekend, we could be close to 70 degrees. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris he is live in our first alert weather center with those warm details. Oh, yeah, and we're already in the low to mid 50s at this moment. We'll finish off in the mid 50s for most part. And across the region. Now, I do want to show you this. You see kind of that lighter spot, the kind of browner spot down towards southeastern Kentucky. That's still where areas are picking up some sunshine, and that's why we're a little bit warmer in that area. Jackson at 56, Frankfurt 54, Corbin, Lexington. We're sitting there in the mid-50s. Once again, we'll be anywhere from, I would say, 55 degrees to about 59 degrees later on this afternoon. So we'll call it an easy 57. Small chance of rain, and it's mainly for east of I-75. That's your best bet. And that goes for the evening time, too. But the focus of the forecast is not about the rain because there's only small chances. Most of us are going to stay dry the rest of the work week. It's about those warmer temperatures. We're talking possible record breaking temperatures. I'll have that in just about 10 minutes. Michael, we'll see you then. Thank you. About 60 students who are considered at risk from a Lexington Elementary School are going to college today. UK student teachers and cheerleaders are hosting the students from Dixie Elementary. They're spending the day implementing science and social study teaching units that they've worked on all semester. Education leaders say the UK students benefit from the real world application while the elementary kids get one on one instruction. They are actually having to teach it. They're having to design it, but then they're having to implement the unit, actually teach it to the students, and then assess how their instruction impacted the student learning. Leaders in the College of Education are hoping to keep this program going next semester and invite other students from around the school district on the college campus. Good lessons being learned there Absolutely, today. Absolutely, yes. Well, people across the country have fallen in love with the voices Jordan Smith. And back here at home, it's no different for his hometown fans back in eastern Kentucky, Harlan County. Smith brought down the house Monday night singing Queen's Somebody to Love. A watch party was held at the Harlan Center last night as people gathered to see him advance on to the finals. From Team Adam. Jordan Smith. <laughs> wow. Jordan will compete against Jeffrey Austin, Emily Ann Roberts, Barrett Baber for the title. You can watch him sing live again on Monday night. Keeps getting better, so I can't wait to see that performance as well. He has an incredible voice, no doubt about yes. that. Well, Donald Trump is once again defending his plan to ban Muslims from entering the United States. More on the potential impact on the Republican race coming up next on Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, the SAG Awards nominations, a good indicator of the Oscars and Golden Globes, have been revealed. We'll take a look at the front runners. Coming up on WKYT News at Noon.